Python Chapter 9, How to Organize a Class. When you are designing a class, you start by specifying its public interface. This consists of all methods and instance variables a user of the class may want to apply to its objects. Your public interface can start with the basics, then as you develop the class, you can add more methods to it. We've been doing this in our different projects, even think about the clicker class. We started with just a couple of methods, and then we wanted to make the object do more things, so we added more and more methods as we thought about it. But you can start with the basics, and then that's one thing about creating a class is that it's very easy to adapt. We've been following this process of doing a public interface in our programs, but we haven't necessarily used the diagram or a chart to do this. So we're going to be practice, practicing using a diagram or chart for public interface in this lesson. When you are organizing a class, start with the behaviors. When you're given a problem to create a class, start by thinking of the, be the behaviors of that class. What do you want the object to be able to do? And you don't, you're not going to think procedurally, like what would I do first, second, third. You don't think about the whole problem. You think about the object and what you want it to be able to do. And then once you have methods created for that object, then you can create all different kinds of programs for that one particular class. So you think of the object itself and its behaviors. I'm going to show you an example of this with a game that I programmed uh, back in the summer. It's the matching game. and I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One that's procedurally and then one that's with the class. You can kind of see the examples of when I'm talking about a behavior versus a procedure. Now here's a program that I created, and this is the matching game program. I'm going to go ahead and play it so you can see what it does. And I've just got six, um, 16 tiles, 4 by 4, and they're different colors. And so you have to match the eight different sets. So I was able to match all the sets, and it told me that it took me 14 turns to do it. If you take a look at the code, you can see that this is organized procedurally. I've got everything defined. I, start, I do have a GUI here, and I've got my draw canvas. And I've got what I'm going to do for a mouse click, what I'm going to do to find the card, and to do a new game. So this is fairly straightforward. It's done procedurally, so I'm thinking about what am I going to do first, what am I going to do second, how am I going to draw everything, how am I going to determine if something is a match or not, and it's all done procedurally. So I just have a few functions here, a lot of global variables and whatnot. Now I redid the same problem as a class, and I made the tile into a class. So this is the same game. I'm going to go ahead and play it again so you can see that it's going to be looking basically the same. I've got my 4x4 grid. We've even got the same colors. Okay, so it took me a little bit of time there. I got it in 21 turns. So the the play did was exactly the same, but let's see how it organized it this time. I've got a class for a tile. This is going to be the behavior of a particular tile. What do I want one tile to do? Well, I'm going to initialize it by saying if it's exposed or not. So have I clicked on it? And I'm going to get the position from where the mouse is clicking. And I'm going to get it assigned a color through a number. So here's a lot of just different behaviors. It's going to be able to return what color it is. It's going to this one is returning if it wants to be exposed. This one actually exposes it. This one hides it. This one's just printing what color. I can use that when I'm testing, when I have a draw. And is selected where it's just checking to see if it's selected or not. So I just took the basic game and I divided it up into behaviors instead of procedures of what I want to do first, second, third. And I could just create a game based on these methods. So I have my mouse click and I have my draw, and I have the game itself that's playing the game. 
So it might look like it's a little more complicated here, but this is something that is easily modified in my public interface. I can just add in some methods or change them, and I don't really have to affect how the game is being played. So it's kind of a different way of thinking, thinking of behaviors versus procedures and that's like a step-by-step -step process. So you're going to be practicing doing this with some more programs. Let's start with the match again that you just saw and let's go ahead and create a public interface for this. On your paper, as, your, as a group, you're going to fill out the chart for the behaviors of the tile object for the matching game. The code's going to be on the next slide, so you'll be able to see it. And for re your reminders, remember to go ahead and use the method names that are shown in the example, so they've already been coded for you. The instance variables are shown in the constructor, and data needed is passed in as a parameter. So if you see a parameter in a method, something other than self, that's going to be your data needed. Also determine what type it is. Is it a constructor? a mutator or an accessor. So work together in your group and fill out this chart and then um, you'll be able to and here's the code. You can stop the video now, fill out the chart and then turn back the, on the video for more instructions. Let's try another example. This is going back to your clicker class. On your paper as a group, once again, fill out the chart for the behaviors of the clicker class. And remember to use your method names. The instance variables are in the constructor and data needed is in a parameter. So look for a parameter in your method and that's how you'll know the data is needed. Also fill out the type. Is it a constructor, a mutator, or an accessor? Here's the code, and you can actually do more than this. If your clicker class included more methods than this, you can add to your chart. So stop the video, fill out your chart, and then turn back on the video for more instructions. Let's do one more example. This is for the tie class. Hopefully you've already gotten to this program, and you had a good time programming it. This one was lesson five. So on your paper, you're going to fill out the chart for the behaviors of the tie object or for the tie class. Same reminders as before. Remember to fill out the type. Here's your code. So work together in a group and fill out your chart. You can turn off the video, complete this part, and then turn that back on the video for more instructions. Okay, let's review what we've been learning and then we're going to move on. So these examples weren't really organizing a class because the class was already done for you. But it did give you a chance to get comfortable with the chart, what it looks like and what it means, how you can go from the code to the chart. So what we're going to be working on next is going from the chart to the code. Now remember, you don't always know all the behaviors of the class. Methods can easily be added as the behaviors of the class change or are modified but it's good to start somewhere with just the basics. That's what we're going to be doing. Now you're going to be given two problems that haven't been done yet. So you're not going to look at any code. You're just going to be given the problem. You will not have to complete this program in Cold Sculptor. This example is simply to organize the class, determine what your methods are going to be, what data might be needed, what types they are, just the organization part. You're going to start by thinking of the behaviors of that object. You're going to fill out the chart with what you expect the behaviors to be based on the problem statement. Then you might write some sample code based on the public interface chart. These will be fairly simple examples. I'm not going to ask you to really go into a lot of depth when it comes to programming. And you're going to handwrite this code. You're not going to get into Code Sculptor and be actually turning in any programs. The first example is for a timer class. You need a class that keeps time. The time is going to initially be set by the user by giving you the hour and minutes. The user can then add minutes or subtract minutes from the time. And also the time can be reset to a new time given by the user. So what do you think are the behaviors of the timer class? Talk amongst your little group and decide what do you think would be the behaviors for the timer class. Stop the video and give it your consideration. 
Okay, did you come up with some ideas? Maybe you have a construct the time object. You want a method to add minutes and a method to subtract minutes. And then you also want a method to reset the time. Now you could have more, but this is pretty much the basics, determining the behavior of a timer determined by the problem statement. Now you're going to fill out a public interface chart for this class. Then you're going to answer a few questions on the page. So you can stop the video right now and work on this part of your assignment. Let's do one more example. This is for a student class. Here's your problem statement. You need a class that keeps track of a student's name and quiz scores. The user should be able to add quiz scores and keep track of the total number of quiz scores. Also, the user should be able to retrieve the quiz score average. So what are the behaviors of this student class? What do you think this object would need it to do? Now, when it says keep track of all the quiz scores, you can do that in a list or you don't really have to keep track of them so it's you know but the thing is you don't have to decide that right now all you have to do is decide on which kind of methods do you think not how I would actually program it but what are the methods that somebody would program so you're going to fill out a similar public interface chart for this determining what the behaviors are and then you're going to answer a few questions on the page so work together with this as your group Once you have everything finished and you have several parts to this assignment and you need to complete them all together as a group, then you can turn it in for a grade.